Hi, I'm Dr. Richard Scott Noakes of Troy University, and I'm here for the Why Medieval Go Medieval Project, where I'm going to tell you a little bit about how I got involved with medievalism. I think my journey with medievalism really began probably in the sixth grade, uh, when several things happened at the same time. One thing was that I took uh, a reading class uh, where we studied literature, and among the many things that we read was C.S. Lewis's The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe from the Chronicles of Narnia. And I became really enamored with this series. I read them so often that my parents, uh, for Christmas, they bought me uh, a, a hardcover box set, which is, which is what this comes from. I snatched this from my son's room. Uh, and so today, my children are still reading the exact, uh, the exact same uh, copies that I read uh, when I was that age. Um, also, I became interested in, I was introduced to a book called The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien, uh, which I had a paperback copy of, and which has since been read to tatters. I think I'm on my third copy of that. I've never really invested in a hardback as I, as I should have uh, for that one. But I get very interested in fantasy fiction. At the same time that that happened, um, in the sixth grade, a lot of my friends uh, were playing this game that I didn't know anything about, which was called Dungeons and Dragons. And this, some of you oldsters out there might recognize as the old basic box set of Dungeons and Dragons. Um, and this is in fact the very box set that, uh, that I had. Uh, this one, um, I think, was made in 1980. And so I still have the old basic rules and the expert rule set also. And we played many, many, many hours of that game. And I got very interested in that sort of popular medievalism. But at that time, my only interest in the academic side were, was, uh, was fantasy fiction. At that time, I had no idea that C.S. Lewis and J.R.R. Tolkien, these two fantasy writers whom I fall in love with, were, were really major scholars. And so uh, medievalism, especially in the, in the form of fantasy fiction, continued to be a hobby for me uh, as I went through middle school and into high school, you know, I graduated into uh, more grown-up uh, books like, uh, uh, like uh, The Lord of the Rings and other things like that. My father was a voracious reader. He had a, a great library of many things, and uh, he had a lot of fantasy fiction among his others. And so uh, I remember I read a lot of the Zank series, uh, Robert Lynn Aspirin's Myth Adventures series, uh, all sorts of vaguely medievalist works. But at that time, I was really just thinking about this uh, not as, a, not as a, a job or something to do for a living, but just as a hobby. And this continued on, and when I went to college, uh, my advisor, Dr. Charbonneau, she was, in fact, uh, a medievalist. And so she taught um, an old English class, and she wrote me into it. And this is the Guide to Old English, uh, an ancient, Egypt, uh, an ancient uh, uh, edition, uh, Mitchell and Robinson's Guide, uh, which is what I first studied Old English in. And I really loved that, but even then I didn't really consider that, uh, that doing things medieval uh, was going to be a, a career for me. Um, I went on, I, I worked abroad for a few years, and I came back and, um, and I thought, well, I'm going to, to I want to teach literature, but I thought I'll teach American literature because uh, I felt like if I wanted to teach abroad, that would be maybe a better thing to do. And as I went through school, I, was, I became really enamored uh, of certain things in American literature. So I was really interested in Nathaniel Hawthorne, and then I got interested in his interest in the Salem Witch Trials, and I got interested in the way the law worked in the Salem Witch Trials and, and the origins of that, and I kept tracing these origins back until finally I was back in medieval <coughs> literature again. Well, eventually the time came when I found uh, that I decided I wasn't going to do uh, American literature at all, and I was considering if I wanted to do this business at all, and uh, uh, Dr. Elizabeth Sklar uh, talked to me, and she pointed out that because of my interest in the medieval, I'd taken almost as many medieval lit classes as American lit classes, and she said, why don't you do medieval literature? And I thought, exactly, why don't I do that? And uh, I did that, and I haven't looked back. And so I'm hoping that out there today, there are, are there is some uh, young woman or some young man who maybe is discovering fantasy fiction, or role-playing games, or video games that have medieval themes, and they really like these medieval themes, they want to know more about them. And 
Uh, it's wonderful to do these things as a hobby. I enjoy doing these things as a hobby, and they're still a hobby of mine. But there are even more delights to be learned when you learn the languages and the history and the culture and all these other various things that go into creating this world uh, that we love to inhabit in our imaginations. Because there were once people who inhabited it not just in their imaginations, but in their real life as well. So I hope that you too will share my love of medievalism.